The confirmed COVID-19 cases worldwide compiled by Johns Hopkins University topped 5 million on Thursday. Over 328,000 people have died from the disease. In a media-saturated landscape, how do we differentiate fact from fiction? In our third edition of the special series, Listen to the Scientists, I will speak to someone who's inspired the hit medical drama, House. Her fascination of uncovering diagnosis took her from journalism to medicine. I'm pleased to be joined via Skype in New Haven, the U.S. by Dr. Lisa Sanders, an associate professor in general internal medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. She is a medical columnist for the New York Times, and last year her passion for diagnosis was brought on screen in a Netflix medical mystery docuseries. Dr. Sanders, thank you so much for joining us. Now, you're an expert in internal medicine. Thanks for inviting me. And you've been studying the process of diagnostics for quite some time now. What do we know for sure about diagnosing COVID-19 by now? How hard has it been to identify the virus and to diagnose patients who have it? Well, one thing we know for sure is that it is not easy to diagnose COVID-19. Uh, first of all, it has many different ways of presenting. Sure, the most common way is with fever and shortness of breath and a dry cough. And yet, the, even the very first cases came in a variety of ways. Um, your doctor, uh, the doctor in China who first identified this, one of the patients she saw the very first, her first bout with this disease had back pain. So it has many ways of presenting. You know, I've written about some of these strange ways in my column in the New York Times Magazine. And, you know, it's just an extraordinary range. You know, it has neurologic symptoms. It has GI symptoms. It has, of course, respiratory symptoms. So there are a lot of ways that it's it presents. But I think what makes it really difficult to diagnose is that many people have no symptoms at all. Hmm. And yet, are able to spread the virus. So it's a difficult, it's a very difficult disease. Yeah, well, um, in the series House, the basic premise is that people have a mystery illness and House and his team have to do a series of tests to figure out what it is. At the end of each episode, they uncover the mystery in the nick of time. Is the coronavirus a very big episode of House, potentially? <laughs> Well, you know what's wrong with it being a house is that Dr. Zhang actually made the diagnosis too quickly for it to be a house episode. <laughs> I mean, yes, she, she tested them for the regular things, but she realized or recognized or intuited that this, was, this could be something different. And so that caused her to reach out. And I think that's extraordinary. So, no, it would make a terrible episode of House because it was solved too quickly. We would have, you know, only a 20-minute show. Yeah. Well, basically, I think we need a little bit, we need to give our audience a little bit of context. And I talked to Dr. Zhang Jixian. She's actually a doctor in Hubei, in Wuhan, where she reported, she discovered the first few cases of COVID-19 uh, that is known, that who submitted them, who admitted themselves to hospital. And she found something strange about these people. Um, they could test positive to, to, to any to influenza A or B or anything that was known. So she immediately reported to her boss, to her uh, superior, to the local CDC, and then they um, compared the pathogen with all the existing um, coronavirus sequence until they found that this was something that they had never seen before. And it took them just a couple of days, about 10 days to two weeks time, to uncover this, uh, this new pathogen and to, to find out the genome sequencing and to share with the World Health Organization and of course subsequently with the rest of the world. So why are you so impressed with her story? What do you think the significance of all of that is? Well, I think it shows how how infectious disease and how science in general should work. I mean, you should be open to the possibility that you're seeing something new. You know, people talk about medicine as if it's been around since Hippocrates or, you know, thousands and thousands of years. But actually, it's, it's still pretty new. Uh, any real understanding is still pretty new. So I think it was extraordinary that she recognized that this was not something that not just something that she didn't know, but possibly something that wasn't known. And that was remarkable. So I think that how it was identified initially makes a terrible episode of House. However, on an individual patient basis, 
I think many of them do, would make good episodes of House because it is. Because of its many ways of manifesting itself, it is quite a mystery. Yeah. And that diagnosis is difficult. Of course. Even now, I believe we're still discovering it. For instance, in Northeast China, there are just cases where people just don't know where the pathogen come from, where, where they got the virus from. But you also, you have been writing these articles, and I read some of them. They're very interesting and easy to read. They're not like medical papers. They're like real stories. For instance, this one about a family of three is sick with COVID-19 symptoms. Who has it? Or her MRI came back normal after seizure. Could it be COVID-19? What are you trying to tell us about? What are you trying to tell people through such pieces? And what are you trying to explain with such efforts? Well, I'm interested in the thought process of making a diagnosis. Like, like so many human intellectual endeavors, you know, it's complicated. And um, you're often wrong on your way to being right. Um, and it's a stepwise process. So that's, that's what I'm interested in, how people make the connections in their brain between what they see and what they know. Those are, those are mysteries that, that cross many boundaries. You know, I mean, yes, you see these kinds of problem-solving mysteries in medicine, and that's what I write about. But, you know, you see these kinds of problem-solving difficulties in a lot of things that, where you have to use your brain. And that's what I'm interested in, is how thinking works. With COVID, uh, it's particularly interesting because we know so little about it still. I mean, it, we're talking about a disease that didn't even exist or didn't, we didn't know about mm -hmm. until December the 27th. So that's incredibly new. So, you know, I'm just trying to explore what this disease looks like yeah. and how we figure it out and how we think about it. Yeah. When you look at the many different ways different countries are combating this disease, uh, what are your um, anxieties? I mean, when you read how people are fighting it or how people are diagnosing it or how the tests are not accurate and so on, and, or maybe things that people seem to do right, what keeps you up at night and what you know, one, makes you want to scream, yeah, do it differently? <laughs> Lots of things, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, how things, how medicine works on a global scale, on a national scale, I read about that in the paper, but I care about the individual patient, figuring out the individual patient and figure, and my focus is at a much more personal and lower, mm -hmm. <laughs> lower to the ground, closer yeah. to the ground. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in patients and what keeps us from, keeps me from making the right diagnosis, what barriers we in, encounter in an individual patient. So one of the, yeah, one of the things that uh, we try to achieve through this series is really to get scientists' voices out there because there's a lot of anti-science sentiment. There is a lot of disinformation, misinformation, rumors, and even people who are educated, sometimes it's very difficult to, um, to identify the right sources of information. What do you think can be done? And what do you think has been an effective way of doing that? You are in journalism as well, so you are in a very interesting perspective to, to talk about this, I believe. Well, of course, I think that we've all been very grateful for the scientists involved uh, in helping us understand and understand this virus and understand how to communicate with people. I think Dr. Fauci um, uh, in Washington has done a fantastic job of uh, communicating some of the basic ideas associated with a pandemic a virus, a respiratory virus that seems to be pretty contagious. Um, I think he's done a great job, and, and even though what he's had to say has changed. But that's that's science. That's medicine. We learn things and then we pass them on as soon as we have something to say um, that makes sense. Um, and I think that that's been great. I think the difficulty is uh, that in the United States we uh, appreciate perhaps too much, um, everybody having their own opinion. So opinions, your opinion doesn't change the facts, but sometimes people overlook that detail. 
Hmm. So looking forward, in every country, I believe, we have a better job to do in educating people about science and in, in, in giving people the ability to think rationally and independently. What do you think can be done from the point of view of media, for instance, or people who are in, you know, either making fiction or working on newspaper journalism? What can be done better? Oh, gosh. Um, I think that reminding people uh, that we're just beginning to understand something, that we're just at the, you know, that things change, you know, information changes, knowledge changes. We have never, I don't think there's ever been a disease that has, where our understanding of it has gone from zero to 100 so fast. And we still have a long, much further way to go. And I think acknowledging what we've been wrong about, but emphasizing what we know for sure right now. It's the best way to move forward. I don't know about in fiction, but certainly in journalism, is even when you report something new, you have to remind people of what we already know. And probably what we don't know, too. <laughs> and what we don't know, yeah. yes. Well, so much that yeah, we don't know. Absolutely. Humility, maybe, is a, is a word to bear in mind. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Dr. Sanders, I appreciate it.